Hey, yeah. It's 903 Boston. I'm your host, Charles J. Yeah, we got that sauce in the pot. Yeah, we got that sauce in the pot. Hey, okay. I am a winner and I don't got shit to lose. Most of these fighters just pick and choose. We finna go by some different rules. Hot go at Pickaboo. Y'all animated like Pikachu. Feeling like Pac when I'm in the booth. Now I understand why the cage bird scenes can five years feel like a dream. I was like smoking still singing in a pizza coupe. Boxing water down like chicken soup. I was in middle school when I first knocked out a bigger dude. I'm speaking on issues that's critical. Yet I get ridiculed. That shit is typical. Biblical words that I speak. God got a purpose for me. Just like that bird in the tree. Ain't nothing nervous in me. Just need some bourbon and weed. Ain't no more courtesy. Mustang United, this is an emergency. Homie got killed on a pet ass burger. White boy got 20 for purge. Standing on it, no converting me. You never heard of me? Damn. But you done heard the name and you done heard me sing. Fuck it. I paint a picture that's very plain. I'm strategizing like Derek James. I feel like Prince out the purple rain. I am a legend, man. 84, let them swing. I swear my girl favorite editor James. I speak aggressive, man, because I'm from Texas, man. There is no question, man. That's my profession, man. Once I stop dressing, the blessing came. Now I'm like the sauce in the dressing, man. I am the past and the present, man. I am a winner and I don't got shit to lose. Most of these fighters just picking two. We finna go by some different rules. How go at Pickaboo? Y'all animated like Pikachu. Feeling like Pac when I'm in the booth Now I understand why the cage bird sings Cause five years feel like a dream I would like smoking still singing in the pizza coop Hey What it do, what it do It's 903 Boxing I'm your host Charles J Say man Floyd Mayweather Protege Kamel Moten Is a savage Savage. I've been trying to come up with a word uh, for Kamel Moten. Um, I've been watching him for a while. Looked at a lot of his amateur fights. Um, and I noticed even in the amateurs, he 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 fought like a professional. He didn't fight as much like an amateur. Um, he had a professional style to me. Um, this is his third fight um, as a professional. And like I said, um, to be so early in his professional career, he, he fight like a professional. He don't have an amateur style at all. He got very good timing. Um, he put a lot on his shots. Um, he don't like to hear it, but uh, cause I, I heard him say uh, he don't like comparisons. But I'm just telling you, if you've never seen Kamel Moten fight, sometimes I'm telling you, I I don't want to. Sometimes I don't want to go too far, but Kamel Moten, sometimes I damn don't want to say he Tank Davis 2.0. Tank Davis 2.0. Listen, that that's a hell of a uh, ceiling. That's a lot to achieve to be, to become a Tank Davis 2.0 because Tank Davis himself is special, um, very special fighter. Um but I just think Kamel Moten got the potential. He fight he fights so much like Tank to me. With the high guard, with just just even the way he throw it, he he just he just remind me so much of Tank. He, 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 even even the, even um uh, the way he built like Tank, like short but 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 cut up and a little stocky, got the same kind of build, very similar style. Very similar style to Tank. I'm t if you've never seen him before, off the rip, he's going to remind you of Tank. He's going to remind you of Tank. I don't know if he grew up watching Tank or if that's just the way he fight. But Kamel Moten, and the reason why I say Tank 2.0 is because Tank don't throw, Tank may throw, Tank may throw 10 punches around. He don't throw many shots. But I will also say this. I don't know if he has the, I think Tank got a different kind of power. I think Tank got a different kind of power that um, these fighters really don't have. I, I'm not going to say his power is on the level of Tank, but he got power. He got the whole world in his hands. He got the whole world in his hands. Yeah, he got some shit in his hands. I'm going to tell you something. That left hook to the body that he ripped when this this dude he just fought was 7-0, that, them left hooks to the body was vicious. Vicious. Yeah, his right hand vicious. He vicious when he when when he go up top. But them hooks to the body, he was buckling them every time he landed one of them motherfuckers. 
Kamel Moon got a lot of potential. Um, he been training in Vegas. He TMT. Um, like I said, Floyd do a lot of monkey shit. Um, I think Floyd even said once that it's Mexicans that made him rich. Kind of like Bun B said. I don't know if you you know about that, but Bun B said that shit. <laughs> Talking about I wouldn't be who I am without Mexican. But anyway, I think Floyd said some shit like that. And Floyd then donated money to the... Uh, did he do it to the... Uh, who, was, who was it? The uh, Ukrainians? But he donated to the cause of some foreign people. But um, he done did a lot of shit that's fucked up. But like I said, out of all the OGs in boxing, Floyd the best we got. He better than Tyson. He better than Sugar Ray Leonard. He better to us than all these other OGs. Way more. He, he, he's he been way more of a contribution because he's created a black superstar. Something none of these OGs have done. Let me tell you something, bro. Mike Tyson could have been created a young black fighter that was a superstar because of Mike Tyson vouch for you. Oh, my God. Because Mike Tyson is one of the very few black legends that the whole boxing world love. Mike Tyson is one of the very few. Him and Sugar Ray Leonard, they don't, the, uh, Floyd is not loved by the boxing world. No matter what he do. Hold on. Sugar. Yeah. No matter what he do. Um... I'm telling you, it reminds me of Al Heyman. I'm, I, like I said, all the fuck shit Al Heyman do towards black fighters and how he treat Mexican fighters better and he treats so many other fighters better. Right now, he treating the Aussie Tim Zoo better. Um, it's a lot, but fans still don't like him. It just show the hate, you know? But um, Floyd done done a lot of shit against the culture, but he the only one that has created a star. And like I said, bro, had Tank Davis been with Ty Rank, had he started his career with top rank, um, Tank Davis would would damn near be like Bud was uh, over there. It would be a thing where uh, fans would be saying, "Well, I mean, he should be a way bigger star than what he is. He should be this Tank spectacular." It would be the same kind of thing. And you know what they they would be doing, saying the same thing they said about Bud because Tank don't talk a lot of shit. Tank don't talk much. Tank does not talk a lot. Tank tweet a lot. Tank does not talk a lot. He would have never became a superstar. A nerd, nowhere near. He would have never had a pay per view fight if he had been with Top Rank. In my opinion, if he was with the Zone, he would have never became a superstar. Eddie Hearn just now doing right by Black Fighter, bro. I ain't, listen, right now Eddie Hearn is the best promotional company, and it's sad, and it's and it's due to the fact that Al Heyman and uh, Bob Arum, they got they got all the talent in the world, but ain't doing shit with it. Ain't doing nothing with it. So, um, yeah, I think at this point, Eddie Hearn is the number one promoter. By default. Because um, we know PBC struggling with inactivity. And we know Bob Arum has many black fighters. But we doubt any of them will become a star outside of Shushu and Abdullah Mason. And Keyshawn Davis. That's about it. I highly doubt Tiger Johnson will ever become a star. I highly doubt a lot of them fighters. Jared Anderson would not become a star. But it's a lot of them. So, because when you look at top rank, don't create stars. They have no pay per view star over there. But anyway, uh, so Floyd is the only one. People act like Floyd is the worst promoter, but he's the only OG that has created a superstar. Oscar didn't create no superstar in Jaime Munguil. He didn't create a star, in, a superstar in Virgil Ortiz. But you would think that Oscar De La Hoya is a better promoter than Floyd. Oscar has not created a superstar. Oh, he created Canelo? No, Floyd created Canelo. Oscar didn't even uh, turn uh, Canelo into a superstar. It was Floyd who done it. But anyway, uh, Floyd, uh, you do a lot of fucked up shit, but I got to give you credit. You you made Tank Davis a superstar. Put him on, put him on the undercard or the Conor McGregor fight, things like that, bro. You made him a superstar. And I think it's a high probability that I don't know if he'll become biggest time, but he definitely going to be a star. It, it, it just ain't no way around it. It ain't no way around And I love the activity. I love the fact that he already got three fights, and he ain't even been fighting a year. He ain't even been a professional a whole year yet. I love it. Um, I re One thing about uh, Leonard Ellaby and Floyd, uh, they do good with one fight at a time. I tell you that. Uh, they put their all in the tank, and I, <laughs> I damn near think they're going to put their all into Camaro Moten. But yeah, I, like I said, bro, a lot of people try to discredit Floyd, but he, he did that. 
He doing he doing things that I haven't seen Bob do. I ain't seen no other promoter create a superstar. None of them have done it. Eddie Hearn has never made a superstar. You can say it was Anthony Joshua, but you know, I don't know. I I don't really give Eddie Hearn all the credit. Anthony Joshua just looked spectacular early in his career. You know, and he he was just he was just a he was just vicious early in his career. He's still a good fighter, but I'm just saying I think it was more so Anthony Joshua. And the UK just loved him. The UK just loved Joshua. So I can't give Eddie Hearn. No other promoter has created a superstar at this point to me except Floyd. So Kamel Moden, uh, you in good hands. When Floyd pick you, he gonna fuck with you. You know? Uh he didn't do right by Devin. He didn't do right by Hitchens. He didn't do right by Shakur. But uh he did right by Tank, and I think he's gonna do right by uh Kamel Moden. Kamel Moden got the style that um it's going to be hard to criticize him. It's going to be hard for them commentators to critique him. <laughs> it's going to be hard. You can't say he boring. That's number one. That's the first thing. And you damn sure can't say he running. Them them the number two things that, that they love to say about black fighters. But your ass will never get to say it about Kamel Moten. He run to the smoke. Um, he action packed. Uh, Any a hard puncher. So you can't say he pillow fisted. Uh, it's gonna <laughs> it's gonna be hard to deny this little motherfucker. This little motherfucker, he he vicious, he vicious. Um, pretty good, very good. Only flaws I I ain't gonna say the only flaws, but what stand out to me is I definitely want to see when you throw the jab, you're very accurate, just like Tank to me. Tank, I'm telling you something. If if Tank threw his jab more often, it would make him an even better fighter. But he just get, he just don't care about a jab. Just don't give a damn about it. His uppercut is his jab. But uh, Tank got a good jab when he use it. And I noticed that in Camille Mo. Like I said at this point, your style mirrored Tank so much. It is so, so similar. The only difference is you throw more punches. The only difference between Camille Moten and Tank Davis is you throw more punches. Y'all fight very similar, very similar style. Um, and like I said, I don't, I don't think your power is as devastating, but it's devastating enough. You may not have that tank type power, but you got enough power to stop anybody. Um, it's gonna be hard to beat them. It's gonna be hard to beat them. But I'm just gonna say this. Um, I think you're an exception to the rule because you up under Floyd, and like I said, Floyd. One thing, when he fuck with you, he 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 gonna turn you into a star. I, I'm very positive of it. But and you ain't gotta do all the shit that they telling uh, Hitchens to do because at this point, uh, Hitchens, um, Hitchens he, he trying to talk his shit now. Um, he talking big shit, and um, I'm just gonna be honest, Hitchens. I am a I am a very big fan of Hitchens. Um, I understand he ain't as popular as Devin. He ain't as popular as Tank. But I really like Hitchens. I really like him as a fighter. And I'm a believer. I am a believer in Hitchens. Um, it's these last three fights that kind of done it for me. At first, I was kind of like, man, Hitchens, they, all that shit they said about him, he in Floyd, Jim, and But no, his last three performances, I was like, okay. Okay. But listen, Hitchens, uh, talking shit ain't gonna make you a bigger name. That shit don't always work, bro. Um, that shit, that shit, that shit like Russian roulette. It's a lot of fighters talk, black fighters that talk shit and and I ain't got shit going. Andre showed up at Canelo press conference talking shit, and motherfuckers laughed at him. Motherfuckers treated him like he was a bum with a goddamn sign, uh, says feed me or some shit. But um, Hitchens trying to talk shit. Listen. This Argentine dude you fighting, he remind me a little bit of Castano, but he more wild. Brian Castano the one fought Jamel Charlo twice, but uh, he a little more wild. It's a wild motherfucker. He coming for your neck. Um, I don't think you underestimate him, but I do. As far as the way you prepare for this fight, I think your preparation. I just think you one of them fighters that prepare properly every fight, but um. I I don't think this dude is good as you, uh, but I don't think you understand. Uh, there's some shit going on. Um, they do that with slick boxers. <laughs> they 
They did it with Raymond Ford. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, it's so slick. I'm finna bring a wild motherfucker here that's trying to knock your fucking head out and gonna put pressure and make you throw more punches than what you normally do. Because that's what happened with Raymond Ford. He fought a motherfucker where he had to throw more shit. He had to go in this bag. That motherfucker Raymond Ford fought was a bad motherfucker. Uh, but this dude, this Argentinian you fought, he mean, uh, he coming for your neck. It's going to be one of them fights where you definitely going to throw more punches than we've ever seen. <laughs> um, and and maybe that is good for you, but also it, it, it's a it's a it's a it's another side to that because fans and promoters seem to think that um uh, a slick boxer's kryptonite is a aggressive fighter and somebody that got punching power. Well, they only do it with, like I say, black fighters. They love for a non-black fighter to be the aggressive, and maybe he may knock out the slick black fighter. Uh, uh, and, and that seems to, they act like that's our kryptonite. That's actually the easiest shit for a black fighter. For a slick black fighter, a come forward motherfucker is the easiest shit, because we account, because he'll counterpunch you anyway. Hitchens is a natural counterpuncher. He wants you to come up for it. And me personally, I think the hardest style for Richardson Hitchens would be against David Haney. But see, boxing don't never promote that, like I said. And I and because I was hearing some shit, uh, I think Matias, I think he said some shit about Cruz or whatever. But I'm telling you right now, I don't think a fight like Sabrina Matias versus uh but don't get it twisted. When it comes to uh Devin Haney versus Matias, that's just a different that that's some different shit. Um I don't put that on the whole uh I don't compare that to Oh, they just trying to find a, a aggressive fighter for a slick back fight. No, Matias is a champion. This dude, uh, Hitchens fighting, ain't a champion. Been beating up dudes in Argentina that they been handpicking. No, Matias has earned his way. That's why I don't throw Matias in the hole just to come forward. No, no, I don't. I don't consider Matias style Mexican style. No, no, no. I don't consider Matias that. Matias is different. Matias fight. I'm telling you, he fight like he from the projects. He fight like a project baby. <laughs> like he, 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 he. It's a method to his madness. That's all I'm saying. In my opinion, it's strategic madness. It ain't just reckless madness. Defense, de defensively, he can become reckless, but offensively, that shit ain't reckless. That shit's strategic. Uh, it's strategic the way he break you down. Even though I still got Devin winning, but um. No, to me, Hitchens, it ain't, it ain't, and, and, and if, I got Devin over uh, Matias, but if Hitchens was to fight Matias, I don't know. I don't, I, that's a fight, I, I don't know who I would pick. I want to say I would pick Hitchens, but I don't, I don't know. Hitchens' feet ain't good as Devin. It's Devin got more tools, but Hitchens may be better than Devin. I say that all the time. Hitchens may be better, but I know Devin got more tools. The jab, for one, Hitchens don't have that. Hitchens got a good jab. It ain't on the level of Devin. Uh, Devin, Hitchens low key. I'm telling you, Hitchens do the same shit, but it's so effective. All he is is a jab and a straight right hand. That's it. That's all he do. He don't throw no left hook. He don't throw a left hook to the body or straight right to the body. None of that shit. I ain't seen him throw uppercuts. No, he throw that straight right or that looping right. And it's hard, though. That's what motherfuckers sleep on. Hitchens will, Hitchens will hurt your ass. Hitchens hit hard. Hitchens hit hard. He just don't believe in his power. But he hit hard. Um, nah, 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 nah. We, we keep thinking that. The slick black fighter, the toughest shit for him is a come forward Mexican or some shit like that. Nah, bro. You put a lot of these slick black fighters in there with other slick black fighters, you'll see a lot of L's on these motherfuckers' rest records because that is the hardest style to beat. Especially when you when you a slick black fighter and you just only used to fighting uh, slow footed Mexicans and hard punches that come forward. When you finally fight a slick black fighter that's a little slicker than you, you ain't gonna know what to do, bro. You used to motherfuckers coming forward to you. Now you got to go get them. That's why, low-key, I, I want to see Devin in a fight like that where well, you got to go get a motherfucker. I want, And I'm going to tell you another thing because uh, Eddie Hearn is putting a lot of pressure on Hitchens to uh, knock out uh, this Lamos dude. Um, listen, sometimes you got to fight like... I'm hitting you to hurt you, though. But shit, if that shit come, it come. Some fighters you don't need to go for the kill on. 
Uh, Isaac Cruz is not a type of fighter you need to try to knock the fuck out. Because that motherfucker will catch you in between that shit and clip your ass. And I just, I, at this point, I told you, bro, I don't even think Deontay Wilder could hurt uh, Isaac Cruz. I just think his head got some shit in it. I think he got metal in his head or some shit. I, I don't think nobody can hurt him. I, I, I'm telling you, I'm going to keep saying that shit. I'm t bro, don't go in there trying to hurt Cruz. I'm t I don't think Matias can hurt Cruz. Not even with accumulation. Not even with accumulation. I think Matias will beat Cruz because he'll outwork him. Nah, and Matias will have to watch out for them bones. But Matias will beat him. I definitely pick Matias over Cruz. But it would be an accumulation. I think he would win a unanimous decision uh, with accumulation. I don't think he'll hurt Cruz. Just don't think that. I don't. I don't. I seen Tank land flush up. Tank is a harder puncher than anybody in boxing. Before he injured his hand, I watched him hit Cruz with everything but the kitchen sink. He never once hurt him. Nah. Ain't nobody at 140 finna hurt that boy. Uh, so anyway, um, some fighters you don't need to knock out. Like if Devin was to go in there and try to knock out Matias, that's not what you do, bro. That's not, you don't go in there and try to uh, outwall him or some shit and try to, uh, no, you outbox him, but make him pay. Make him respect you. Put every, um, uh, uh, when, when you hit him, hit him with that shit. But uh, he's not the kind of fighter you go in there and try to knock the fuck. No, some fighters, you you got to be more strategic. That's they fight. That's they fight. So, uh, Hitchens, you get to going in there trying to knock this dude out and just try to uh, be too spectacular and get your ass clipped. So, uh, I think you need to box, but look for shots. Break his ass down and look for big shots to land on him. But don't just don't don't go in there and get, get too caught up in a firefight because... Um, but I definitely want to see more from your arsenal. I definitely want to see the inside game. Because this dude love the inside. I would love to see how you work him on the inside. I would love to see that. But I'm telling you right now, Richardson Hitchens, to me, uh, he controlled distance better than most fighters in boxing. But um, And also, uh, Hitchens and uh, Camille Moten sparred and shit. That's what's up. But uh, also, Hitchens, uh, you damn near need to uh, come out and tell black folks who... What you repping? We know we know you say Brooklyn and shit like that, uh, but we need to know uh, because there's so many flags and, and fighters are changing their uh, race like uh, Kid Austin and uh, Shakur. Listen, just let us know, bro. Is you gonna rip? <laughs> is you gonna rip the uh, cotton picking Negro Nation, or uh, is you gonna rip uh, Haiti? Like I said, it don't matter if I see Haitians as black or if I see Jamaicans as black. Uh, when they they consider themselves Haitians and Jamaicans consider themselves Jamaicans. They don't they don't uh, they don't they don't come from the cotton picking slave tribe. They don't com they different from us. I told you it's it's nine different blacks in this world, and so uh, so we need to know if you with us or if you with the Haitians. <laughs> I'm just saying. And I know they try to tell you black fighters don't sell pepper, but I think you need to come over. Just come on over to us. Uh, just let us know you black. Just let us know you with the cotton picking Negro Nation, and we'll accept you. Because uh, I'm telling you, um, that shit that shit didn't really work out for Bermain Stavern. So, no no disrespect to the Haitians, and you know. Um, by the way, and uh, yeah, yeah, cause they did, yeah, they 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 won the very few that won a little uh, revolution and shit, and ran off the goddamn French. So so Haitians got plenty of fight in them. I heard it's fucked up over there now, but yeah, yeah, y'all fucked up the French fucking with your shit. But uh, yeah, let us know what you repping. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, I support you a little more if you rep the cotton picking Negro Nation. I put a little more support with you. So um, and also um. It, it, and I didn't got on Hitchens. I know uh, I didn't have a whole lot on Moten because he only got three fights. Uh, we we gonna go from we gonna we gonna play it by ear with him. But I'm definitely watching him. Just keep up with this kid, man. Kamel Moten. He only 17 years old. I'm just telling you, he vicious. He fight just like Tank Davis to me. So just be on the lookout for Kamel Moten. That is Floyd Mayweather's protege. Uh, Richards and Hitchens. Uh, a lot of people have dished you for talking about this rehydration clause uh, with the IBF for you to fight Matias. Um, and also in this fight here, he, he finna have to do a, a he gonna have to weigh in again tomorrow before the fight and he can't be over 10 pounds. So this is his first attempt at trying that shit. I don't know how his body gonna take to it, but I'm telling you right now, if you drained uh, tomorrow, 
you in for a tough fight because this dude going to throw a lot of punches. You're going to have to be, I hope you handle that little 10 weight, uh, 10 pound hydration clause, right? Because this dude coming for your head. This dude is going to come try to knock you the fuck out. He going to throw some wild shit at you. This dude going to come at you vicious. So, but like I said, he control, control distance very well. But like I said, a lot of people try to shit on you about that. And I agree with you, bro. I don't think uh, one of the sanctioned bodies should be different from the other. Uh, all the sanctioning bodies let you weigh whatever you weigh the next uh, the, the day of the fight night, and it should be that way with the IBF. But it ain't. And I'm surprised Matias is able to uh, do that 10-pound shit because he seemed pretty big to me, but uh, he do it. But, um, yeah, I know you in Tank Homies, bro, and um, you talking big shit to Devin. But I just I would like for you to get aggressive like that with Matias too, though. No, no, no. Don't just disrespect Devin. I know Tank your homie, and that's what we do. We gang bang. So he, don't, he into it with your homie, so you fuck him and fuck his team. Nah, I will, I get a little aggressive with Matias, though. Because when, when they ask you about him, you say he's a very good fighter. You're very respectful. I don't think you scared of Matias at all. But not be just as disrespectful. No, no, no. Be just as disrespectful to T.O. You want to fight T.O.? Be just as disrespectful. Don't be respectful then. No, 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 no! Don't, don't, don't do the monkey dance. Don't just, don't just be aggressive with the other black fighter. Be aggressive with Matias and To too. So that's all I want to see. I want to see some shit like that. So, um, I'm just gonna tell you, bro. Um, you damn if you do, and you damn if you don't. Um, I, I want, I want to see you definitely become a bigger name, and I think you deserve that. But it's gonna be hard, bro, because. I'm telling you, bro, Devin had to do a lot to get to where he is. Because I remember when they were saying, they, they, they wasn't nobody trying to fuck with him. But uh, it's been a journey for him. Uh, Shakur had one bad performance, and his stock has plummeted. His stock. I'm telling you, I don't hear Shakur fans nowhere. Boy, last year we couldn't stop you motherfuckers from talking. Oh, boy, when he got in the ring after that Devin and Loma fight and said Loma really won and he deserved the titles and you said Devin food and he was always easy work. Shakir fans, I'm telling you, they talked all the way up into his performance and they ain't talked since. So, But, yeah, I wish Shakir the best, but, you know, it's true. It's true. Um, but, yeah, Hitchens, uh, I know you're good and I definitely believe in you, bro. Um it's, it's going to take these fights to bring that out. I think you is. I think you on that level. I think you up there with the Matias, the Devin Haney. The, up, I think you up there. And I, I almost want to favor you over Matias. I just don't know. I just don't know. I just. Devin is just proving more. You may be better than Devin, but Devin is proving more. I just trust Devin more. I trust Devin under pressure. I trust him under pressure. I ain't seen you under a lot of pressure. This Argentine finna put some pressure on you, and he can punch. So, um, I definitely think we gonna see more from you. You you definitely gonna have to bring some shit out your bag, a couple more tools. But um, you one of the most accurate fighters in boxing. Um, like I said, I think you're very good, bro. But um, I'm telling you, I'm I'm more confident that you beat Tio than I am that you beat Matias. I think you'll you outbox the shit out of T.O. I think I I think you'll beat uh, T.O. pretty easily. I think you'll make that shit look easy. T.O. struggle with boxers. I think you'll make that shit look easy. And you got enough power to keep... You may drop T.O. in that fight. I don't know about Matias and I don't know about Devin. I think... I, I, I'd pick your eyes at Cruz. Because your defense is too good. And you're going to clinch his ass. Yeah, you'll be Cruz. You, you'll be Cruz. I got you being Cruz. Only fighters I, I just don't know about is Matias and Devin. But other than that, I think Hitchens is that good. I got him beating to y'all. But um, it is what it is, man. Um, yeah, Hitchens, I definitely, I definitely want to see you become a bigger name, bro. I think you just one of them slept on talents. But I'm telling you, bro, this is a tricky fight they putting you in. Uh, is this dude the elite of the elites? No, nah, but he got a he got a different kind of style. And like I said, I don't know how that ten pound rehydration gonna do for you, cause you is a big one forty pounder. Hey, you weighed in at like one thirty nine point eight. So I mean, 
I don't know. We're gonna see how this weight do. We're gonna see how you're looking, but um, I don't, I don't, I don't like what Eddie Hearn said about you. I mean, like, bro, the, listen, you could have knocked out Jose Zapata. You could have th uh, threw more punches, but bro, but you shut him out. You shut him out. That that's another thing. I'm tired of the boxer always getting blamed. Why don't the aggressive fighter don't get credit for cutting the ring off? I mean, why? I mean, why don't he get discredited for? Why you didn't cut the ring off? Why wasn't you able to land? It's always like the boxer makes the fight boring because he strip you of what you good at. Like Floyd used to strip fighters. No, 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 no. Why don't the aggressive fighter get blamed too? So, you know, the fight would be more exciting if the aggressor was able to land more punches. So that's your fault. So it, it worked two ways, bro. Um, I'm telling you, I definitely, you could throw more punches here and there. Yeah, you could go for the kill when you see it. When you hurt your opponents, you could go for the, because you hurt your opponents. You could go for the finish, but I'm telling you, I listen. I choose discipline over recklessness any day. When Hitchens is disciplined, I'm telling you, bro, I, it's hard to beat him. That and that's what they're trying to do, and that's what they're trying to do in boxing. Period. They're trying to take out pure boxing. They don't like that shit. No, the casual fans won't accept it, and you have to be exciting and knockouts is exciting, and you have to go for the kill. Not understanding that when the pure boxer go for the kill, you making yourself more and more vulnerable. Rather than if I stay disciplined, bro, you can't fuck with me. If I fight my fight, you can't fuck with me. So I'm all for a pure boxer fighting his fight. You ain't got to prove a motherfucking thing. That aggressive fighter needs to prove that he can get to you, that he can land his shit. If he can't land his shit and my little jab and straight right hand is enough to keep you at bay, bro, do what you got to do, bro. Do what the fuck you got to do. I love boxing, bro. And, and like I said, bro, um, yeah, motherfucker say what he want, bro, but I know boxing. That's one thing you can't say about me, bro. So, I'm all for a pure boxer staying pure. You can keep that shit pure boxing. You ain't got to throw haymakers. You ain't got to do none of that shit. If that style is the best style for you and can't nobody fuck with it, do that shit. That's why motherfuckers said the Pacquiao and Floyd. We waited all them years and it was just a boring fight. No, it's just because y'all y'all thought Pacquiao was going to be landing that bullshit on them. And when they seen that he couldn't hit Floyd and he couldn't really hit him and Floyd stayed disciplined and fought his fight, now the fight wasn't shit. But if Pacquiao had to drop Floyd twice, they would have said it was the most thrilling fight of all time. So, um, yeah, I love knockouts too and I love, um, I definitely think it, I believe in this. If you get a fighter hurt, go for the kill. If, you, if he hurt, get his ass out of there. And I do believe in punching with mean intentions. And I think Hitchens do that. Not enough, but I think he do punch with main intentions. That's why the aggressive fighter don't go for broke because he don't want to get knocked out by the boxer. So it is it is it's two ways you can look at it, but um Oh uh, we're gonna see tomorrow, man. Um <laughs> Yeah, I would love to see Devin Haney versus Hitchens. I'm telling you and I and and, and, and low key, like I said, and Devin needs some shit like that. It's not just you. Y'all y'all I'm telling you, bro, black fighters better start fighting slick black fighters, bro. I'll tell you one of you motherfuckers fuck around and lose to a Montana love. You know, cause he's slick. He's a slick black. <laughs> one of you motherfuckers keep on fighting these goddamn come for mescas and you get used to that slow shit. You motherfuckers fuck around and lose to a goddamn Montana love or some shit. I'm just, I'm just telling you, bro. So, uh, I think as fans, we need to push more for that. Push on, push for more black on black events. Let's push for more aggressive versus aggressive fighters. Sometimes I want to see a, a two rock'em sock'em motherfuckers. Sometimes, sometimes I want to see two power punches against each other. Sometimes I want to see two slick boxers against each other. Sometimes I want to see who 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 just a little bit more slicker. So, it ain't always got to be the slick fighter versus the come forward fighter. Like, that shit is just the, the the perfect fight, and that's the only way it's supposed to be. So, and like I said, and another thing, all black fighters ain't slick boxers. Some of us, we got some we got some motherfuckers that come for your head, like Khalil Cole. Oh, we got some motherfuckers, old Kurt Scobie. We got some motherfuckers that'll come for your head. So, give us some fights where we in there with a slick Slovakia fighter. And the black fighter coming for his head. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and like I said, the Slavoski fighter ain't going to get called boring for his boxing. Just like Willie Pep didn't get called boring. But anyway, motherfucker brag because he didn't throw no punch in the round and never got hit but still won the round. Anyway, uh, this is 903 Boxing. I'm your host, George. With that, I'm out.